say that uh, life can sometimes be abrupt and harsh is to miss it by a country mile. Life sometimes, as the saying goes, turns on a thin dot. When I thought about that expression and knowing that I wanted to preach on this passage this morning, I asked my daughter, Jennifer, who lives in Lexington and somewhat of an artist, that's an understatement, she's a really good artist, to draw me a little picture, and this is what she drew, as you see on the screen. Um, at the very base of that picture is a thin dime, and uh, the funnel cloud that's turning above uh, has come through and it has picked up a bunch of stuff, including a church. Uh, if you were to take a real good close look at it, it's on your bulletin cover too, it's, uh, uh, there's a dog chasing the fire hydrant in that mess somewhere. <laughs> Uh, a tree being thrown this way, and a half of a bathtub, and a cow at the top, and a pig way at the top, uh, and all of it spinning and turning and throwing here and there. Does that not describe life being abrupt and harsh, turning on a thin dime? Well, the possibilities of that are as endless, I guess, as the horizon. It seems, though, the longer you live, the more that dime is spinning and the more it's attached to a funnel cloud. Uh, you might recognize a few of these times when you feel like your life is spinning on a dime. How about the time, the test that the doctor gave you for AIDS and in perhaps a myriad of other diseases, serious, the, the test came back positive. What about that time the extra in your pay envelope is a notice to clean out your locker? What about the drunk driver that hits your car head on, coming very close to making your husband a widower, and you find out that he has no insurance? What about when you find out that you should have read the fine print on that document that you signed? What about when your child announces he's gay and doesn't believe in God anymore? What about? Word about. All those things are hypothetical, right? Nobody in here has had to deal with any of that stuff, right? I can tell you that, uh, except for the last one about the child announcing his gay and doesn't believe in God, the other four have been my experience. Uh, I, I was tested one time for AIDS because the doctor said you have the kind of thing going on on your skin there that there's only two possibilities. Number one, you have AIDS. Number two, you're of oriental descent and you have a special disease. You talk about life spinning on a dime. You know, I had to think about my heritage. Who are my folks anyway? You know, I knew the other thing was not going to be a reality. And I've been fired from a job before. We had a drunk driver hit my wife, almost making her husband a widower. I should have read the fine print on more than one occasion. You would think I'd learn. But that stuff seems hypothetical. That only happens to other people, right? Except when it happens to you. Life turns on a spinning dime all too often. <coughs> this past week, Puerto Rico had three different governors, and they're looking at a fourth. Lord help them, right? Uh, their their dime is whirling like a you know like a electric meter gone crazy. If you ask the families of 29 people in Dayton and El Paso about life spinning on a dime, what about the lives of uh, the families of nearly 3,000 people who died in? the 9-11 terrorist attacks. What about their world turning on a dime? What about the families of countless soldiers who went marching off to war and were carried back home? Immunity from the difficulties of life are like measles. You can cure that. But all the rest of the stuff is on the table at all times. Life turns spinning on a dime. I want you to know that I also recognize that life at the United Methodist Church charge of Mount Zion and Pleasant Hill also spins regularly. Like when the DS informs the pastor parish committee chairperson that you're going to have a new pastor next year. You hear all about the new guy, you're just getting used to uh, 
the idea of change, and the superintendent calls again and says he can't come. And so you're going to be stuck with the same old pastor again. <laughs> Just when you're getting used to the idea of a break from Roundworth, you're back in the same old harvest. Well, this is church life. It's itinerancy spinning on a thin dime, an ecclesiastical denominational spinning dime. I want, I'm here this morning to tell you, out of my rich experience, and with a great deal of confidence, because I've been on both sides of the pulpit. I've been in the pew as a lay person. I've been behind the pulpit as clergy. I can tell you that it feels much the same from either side of the pulpit. That spinning dime in church life is not for sissies. Whether it's 60 people trying to get used to a brand new pastor and family, or a pastor and family trying to get used to 60 new people, and a new place to live, the spinning of the dime in such circumstances can cause a run down at Walmart on Rolaids and Tums. I mean, it can drive you crazy. So the question is, what is it that ordinary people like you and me, what is it that we can do when life comes at us like that? When life comes at us and it seems it's spinning so fast, you just want to say, stop the world. I just need to get off for a minute. I'd like for us to take a bit of wise advice from Heaven's War Group, where all the strategy is planned and, and all of the plans that God has are so much better and so much different, it seems, than our plans. I believe if we take a look, a hard look at God's Word in many places, but I'm going to look at two in particular this morning, there are two certain things that we can do. Now, I'm going to start the sentence and you're going to help me finish it. Right? <coughs> Here are the two things that we can do when life comes at us like that. We can praise the Lord and we can... Well, that went over like a red balloon. <laughs> what? Come on, you guys are old enough. We can praise the Lord and we can pass the ammunition. The ammunition. Was that hard? <laughs> Praise the Lord first. Psalm chapter 62. The psalmist writes, Let all that I am wait quietly before God, and my hope, for my hope is in Him. He alone is my rock and salvation, my fortress, where I will not be shaken. My victory and honor come from God alone. He is my refuge, a rock where no enemy can reach me. Now, for those who are trusting in Christ, there is nothing that can actually touch our life. You say, wait a minute, I know how frail life is. I know how fragile we can be. You remember the song that Martin Luther wrote? We've sung it in here any number of times. You've sung it if you've gone to a Lutheran church. <laughs> a mighty fortress is our God. In the final verse of that song, it says, The body they may kill, God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is what? Forever. In other words, our biological life can be taken from us. Our financial strength can be taken from us. Our relationships can be whipped out from underneath our feet. People can die on us. We can die on others. The body they may kill, but God's truth abideth, meaning that no enemy can really reach what is life for us. Luther, Martin Luther must have been reading Psalm 62 in order to be able to pen those words. A mighty fortress is our God. The body they may kill, God's truth about us still. Because your whole life, your whole eternity is untouchable by any earthly spinning dime. No matter what's happening in life, whether it's the ecclesiastical doings of bishops and BSs and all the people that seem to be in charge these days, what is it? What's the old saying about when everybody's in charge? Nobody's really in charge. Praise the Lord. Coming into church this morning uh, on Pottery Highway, I was uh, I was listening to a song on the radio uh, about when when everything goes wrong, how you can praise the hurt away. And it's true. It's true. There was a a time in my life. I'm going back many years now. I'm thinking about it specifically. It was a Sunday afternoon in the church I served at evening services as well. And I was sitting at the desk, 
And I was so discouraged. I was so discouraged, not over the church situation, but over life in general and some things that were going on in my life that I just couldn't figure out. And, and it seemed like, like a, a whole world was coming unglued for me. And I didn't know, I frankly didn't know how I could just take another breath. Just sitting there, looking at the Bible and the sermon that I had prepared for that evening and feeling like there was anywhere in the world I wanted to be other than church tonight. I didn't want to see anybody, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I was so tired, I was discouraged, I was so depressed. And I wanted to praise God. I knew that praise chases away that kind of stuff. I knew that praise can change the circumstance. It may not change the circumstance very often, but it can certainly change me in the circumstances. And as I sat there depressed, with tears streaming down my face, my wife happened to come into the bedroom to pick something up. And as she's walking out, she just turned and with her hand, she brushed against my cheek. Just like that. She said, it's a loving thing to do. Yes, it is loving thing for a wife to do for us, a husband to do for the wife. She just brushed my face. And I can't tell you why, I can't tell you how, but in the touch, something told me that God was on the job, that everything was going to be fine. Was everything fine immediately? No. But you know what? He so changed me with that touch. It was almost like it was the hand of God that touched my face and gave me confidence and gave me assurance. When life is spinning on a thin dime, you don't know if you can take another step. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. The second part of this is past the ammunition. <clears throat> Point you at Philippians chapter 3, just two verses there. Verse 13 and 14. Paul writes this, he says, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, here it comes, I press on. That's passing the ammunition. I press on. What is it that a gun needs? A gun needs ammunition, right? What is it that your life needs? It needs for you to press on. That's the ammunition. Somebody once said that 90% of life is just showing up. God handles the rest. God handles the rest. Paul says, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. What Paul said about pressing on is a matter of keeping your foot to the pedal in the kingdom of God for whatever he has called you to do and to be, to accept it and to press on with it. In military terms, he is the general and we are the enlisted troops. We are the ones who follow. So really this thing comes down to these two things to praise the Lord and to pass the ammunition, to put yourself in an attitude of constantly praising Him no matter what happens, and passing the ammunition of showing up, trusting that He is going to handle whatever dime you happen to be spinning on at the time. Because life may truly spin on a dime at times. But listen, your home is not on this earth. Your home is in the heavenlies. And folks, we are not there yet. But we're headed that way. No matter what's spinning, he'll keep us going in the right direction. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the greatest things about the Christian life that I know of is what we're going to sing right now. It's, he leadeth me. Oh, blessed God. That's the reality about life spinning on a dime. We have a leader who's going in the right direction. We simply follow him. It doesn't make a difference what turns and what gets thrown this way or that because he is the one doing the leading. Let's stand together as we sing.